ladies and gentlemen. The story you are about to hear is true. Only the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Fatima Cigarettes, best of all long cigarettes, brings you Dragnet. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned to homicide detail. A young woman has been murdered. The body was discovered behind locked doors. The assassin is still at large. Your job, find him. If you want a long cigarette, smoke the best of long cigarettes. Smoke Fatima. Fatima is the long cigarette which contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos superbly blended to make Fatima extra mild. And that's why Fatima has a much different, much better flavor and aroma than any other long cigarette. That's why Fatima is doubling and redoubling its smokers. So, if you want a long cigarette, smoke the best of all long cigarettes. Smoke Fatima. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Tuesday, January 9th. It was stormy in Los Angeles. We were working a day watch out of homicide detail. My partner's Ben Romero. My name's Friday. I was on the way to work, and it was 6.45 a.m. when I got to the steps of the city hall, the main street entrance. Hey, Joe, wait up. Morning, Ben. When did they call you? 5 a.m. Donahoe called you. Yeah. Miserable out, isn't it? It's pretty wet. My feet are soaking wet. See the transfer there? Yeah. New chief of detective? Ooh, wait a minute, I want to get some gum. Pack experiment. Well, I heard about the new chief. Thad Brown. Good man. Piece of gum? Oh, thanks. Um, I wish they'd make up some minds about our ship. Work days, they call you back night. Work nights, they call you back days. Why don't you put in for a desk job? You may never have to call you back. You're here all the time. Now you just hide the police. Here we are. Thanks, Egan. It's a great way to start off as your new chief. Call you back on a rotten morning like this. I'm glad you got the job, Thad. Yeah, congratulations, Chief. It's hard to follow a man like Ed Backstrand. Gonna need your help. You got it. Here's why I called you back. Laura Barclay. Mm -hmm. The dead body report, nightclub entertainer. Landlady found the body an hour ago. Who's covering? Burton and Anderson. They're out there now. Strangled, huh? Well, the lamp cord. Still trying to figure out how the guy got in the house. Doors and windows all locked. Yeah. The tech. That the motive? For now, yeah. I just came from there. I think there's more. Any reason? Her room wasn't prowled. Yeah? Just a hunch. Play it for me. Ben and I left Thad Brown's office, picked up Lieutenant Lee Jones at the crime lab, and drove to the West Adams District, number 16 Imperial Place, where the body of Laura Barkley had been found. It was an ornate frame structure done in Victorian style, at least 30 to 40 years old. Number 16 was on the ground floor. We went in. A narrow hallway led to the bedroom in the rear of the house. Two gas jet fixtures, which had been converted to electricity, were the only illumination. Uh, this place has seen better days. Anybody else coming out, Lee? I see flash bulbs down there. They must be here already. Lieutenant, Friday, down this way. Hi, Burton. Hi. Photographer's covering the body position. Peterson's dusting for prints. Fred, shoot a couple of overheads. Don't make them all angle shots. Get up high, then move in close. The yeah, chief was right. Room's in pretty good order. Did you talk to anybody, Burton? Landlady. Lives upstairs. Only two people living in the building. Mm -hmm. Did she tell you anything? Said the Barkley girl paid her rent on time. Good tenant. Plays the organ at the Blue Fox. Cocktail lounge. Mm. Any idea how the murderer got in here? Not yet. Every door and window in the place is locked. Anything else? That's it so far. We'll give you 15.7 on what we got. Okay, Lloyd. You and Anderson have another detail? Yeah, working on that Westwood thing. Two uniform men outside if you want anything. Right, thanks. 
Looks like a tough one, Joe. Whoever did it must have come in through the keyhole. I'll see you later. So long, Wade. Andy. Peterson's destined for prints. Nothing yet. Only piece of physical evidence so far, the lamp cord she was strangled with. I'll run it through downtown. Not a sign of a struggle. Maybe she wanted to die. Check the bathroom, will you, Ben? Yeah. I'll look around the kitchen. Hey, Pete, have you dusted the lamps yet? Not that. Not this one. Ben, come here a minute, will you? Ben! Yeah? Come in the kitchen, will you? You got a pencil? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, here you are. Okay. Take a look at this garbage chute here. Mm, let me see. Hmm. About eight feet to the ground. Big enough for a man to get through. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no problem. Lee. I'll be right there. It could be the answer, Joe. Well, he either got in this way or he was in the house when she came home. What do you got? Garbage chute here. What do you think? Could be. Let me grab a kit. Mm, let's see. Aluminum powder. There it is. side of the lid. Looked pretty clean. Must have just been scrubbed. Abrasions here. Got a pencil? Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. Hold it up there, will you? Yeah, mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, there we go. Large prints. Unusually large. Big hands. Can I look inside the chute a minute, Lee? Go ahead. Watch that lid. Yeah, I will. Looks like it's blocked off upstairs. This thing hasn't been used for garbage for some time. Most of them were condemned a few years back. I'll get Fred to shoot these. Let's go in the living room. That desk been dusted, Lee? Yeah, it's clean. Go ahead. Mm, Take a look, Joe. Photographs. Hmm. Hundreds of them. All men. Yeah, all different. Lee Jones and the crime lab crew finished up and went back to Central Division. Two uniformed officers remained on duty at the scene of the crime. Thad Brown had men sent out to canvas the neighborhood. Ben and I went upstairs and talked with a landlady, a Mrs. Emma Smith. Yes? Police officers. You Miss Smith? Yes. You're not the same officers I've talked with before. No, ma'am. I wonder if we could ask you a few questions. I told the other officers everything I knew. We have to double-check, Miss Smith. Who was the girl who lived in the apartment below, number 16? Laura Barclay. Is that the name she used, the mail she received? Was it addressed that way? Yes, it was. She was a very good tenant, Laura. No trouble with her at all. When did she move here? Oh, About four or five years ago. I have the rent receipts. I always save receipts. Did she always live by herself? Oh, yes. That apartment rents to one person only. Did she have many visitors, friends dropping in? None that I ever saw. Pretty much to herself, Laura. The men came yesterday and took it away. What's that, ma'am? The organ. Electric one. Laura rented it from a big downtown firm. Used to practice all the time. My, it was beautiful. Yeah. In the gloaming. She used to play that for me. Mrs. Smith, when did the men come and take the organ away? Yesterday, in the afternoon, about 4.30. Was Miss Barclay at home when they came? No, she wasn't. She left me a note to let them in, so I let them in. I never allow anyone in the apartment without a note. You know the name of the company where she rented the organ? Brazier's, it was called, down on South Spring. Well, didn't you think it was unusual that Miss Barclay didn't have any friends? Now, officer, I didn't say Laura didn't have any friends. What I said was that she didn't have any friends who came to see her here. 
She moved here from a hotel for women. That's the reference she gave me. I see. I wonder if you could give us the address of that hotel, please. I'll write it down for you. Thank you. Uh, Miss Smith, did you hear any unusual sounds in Miss Barclay's flat last night? Anything out of the ordinary? If I had, I would have called the police and we'd have saved a girl's life. Well, thank you very much, Miss Smith. Here's her car. If there's anything you think of after we've gone, don't hesitate to call us. Thank you, I will. I hope you get the dirty men who killed Laura. We didn't say it was men, Miss Smith. Well, isn't it always a man? Before we left Mrs. Emma Smith, we asked her about the garbage chute. She said it had not been in use for the last four years. We showed her the stack of photos. She could identify none of them. We drove back to Central Division. We checked Brazier's music store. The two men who moved the organ were checked out and cleared. We went to the Wynn Hotel for young ladies. They could tell us nothing. Laura Barclay's references were all good. We went back to the office and met with Chief of Detectives Thad Brown. You think he got in through the garbage chute? That's the way it looks, Chief. Went all over the apartment. If there's another way, we haven't found it. All right, you know how he got in. Who is he? We got out an APB on his M.O. Latent fingerprints are making a run on those prints we found. You got an idea about these pictures here. Most of them theatrical still, show people. Hmm. Frank Latour and his canine circus. To Laura, all my love, Frank. Tell you what you do. Here's a guy I checked with this morning. Bernard Carubian, theatrical booking agent, huh? Yeah, Barney's office is down in the Orpheum building, 8th and Hill. He booked her into the Blue Fox. See what he can tell you. Right. I'll grab the picture, Ben, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, you got more than you started with. Yeah, those fingerprints. We get a make on them, we'll be close to the guy. So was the Barclay girl. But he got away. <laughs> I wonder if we could see Mr. Carubian. Who's calling, please? Sergeant Romero and Sergeant Friday, police officers. Oh, one moment, please. Yeah, please. Two police officers to see you, Mr. Carubian. Sergeant Friday and Sergeant Romero, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Send them in. Go right in. Thank you. All right, let's go. Uh, say that you booked Laura Barkley. Yeah, that's right. I spoke with a... That was name right here. Chief Thad Brown? Oh, that's right. He asked me about Laura. Too bad about that. Any clues? We're working on it, Mr. Carubian. What makes a person pull a stunt like that? Laura didn't have no enemies. She had one. Well, I don't know much about her, except I've been booking her for about four years. Good organist. Pretty fair voice, too. Got some pictures here. I wonder if you'd take a look at them. Yeah, sure. Quite a stack. Yeah, old Frankie Latour and them dogs. Great act. I book them. Ricky Rogan, King of the Tap. Gus Sorinoco and that singing seal of his. Yeah, yeah, I know all these people. I book them all. Did Laura Barkley work with all these people? One time or another, yeah. During the war, USO camp shows, you know. Uh, do you know whether she was close to any of them? Well, come to think of it, she was. That Frankie Latour, crazy about them dogs of his. No, I mean the men themselves. Anybody that she seemed particularly interested in? Never heard her mention anybody. Pretty girl. Did you know her very well, Miss Groovy? Only when she came in and out of town on an engagement. I'm a married man. Well, then you don't think there's anything to these pictures here of hers, huh? Well, I wouldn't say so. When you're on the road, you always collect photos of the people you work with. Souvenirs. Mm hmm Well, thank you very much, Mr. Carubian. Here's our card. You betcha. Say, I sure hope you catch the guy. Wonder why he picked on Laura. Sometimes they don't have a reason. When we left Bernard Carubian's office, we checked by the Blue Fox Cocktail Lounge. It was still early. The sign said open 5 p.m. It was 3.15. We went to the morgue in the basement of the Hall of Justice and looked at the coroner's report. The autopsy report stated that the cause of death for Laura Barclay was strangulation. We went to the second floor of the old city jail building, the crime lab. Nothing on the lamp cord, standard UL 110 line, but anywhere, no prints. How about the chute, Lee? Went back there and rechecked. You were right. The guy got in through the garbage chute. Found more of the same prints along with some cloth impressions in the dust. Tell you anything? 
The guy was wearing some kind of tweed, Donegal, 15 to the inch. How about the size of a man, Lee? How big could he be to clear that chute? It had a 20-inch diameter. Almost any man could squeeze through that. Check the ground level of the chute. Cement, no footprints. Mm. You don't have too much for it. I got one thing for you. What's that? I think I found your motive. And not the one listed on the report. Yeah? Here are the blow-ups of the body. This 36 by 54 here. Hold that in, will you, man? No, I don't. Look through this magnifying glass here. The right hand. Yeah. See where I'm pointing? Uh, ring finger, yeah. Looked like ring marks. That's right. Pretty wide. Must have been good side rings. Well, they might still be in that room. I called Thad Brown. He had the room rechecked. No sign. And you think we got a burglary motive on our hands? That's my guess. Thad had the boys check with the landlady. She didn't know anything about any rings the Barclay girl might have had. Yeah. That doesn't help. I think I got something else here. Oh, library book. You heard? Her cards in one of the pockets inside checked out from the L.A. Public Library main branch. Mm-hmm. I think these might be your lead on the missing rings. A librarian sees a person's hands every time they check out a book. That makes sense, Lee. We'll play it that way. What department were the books checked out of? The music room. Well, that's it. I think you've got your motive now and a good set of prints. You're close. Thanks a lot, Lee. Well, let's go to the library, Ben. I'll get it. Crime lab. No, this is Friday. Oh. Thanks, Frank. Well, all we got's a motive. How do you mean? No make on those fingerprints. Nothing. You are listening to Dragnet for the solution to an actual case from official police files. Now, here is a real solution to many of your Christmas shopping problems. If your friends smoke a long cigarette, give the best of all long cigarettes, Fatima. Give Fatima for quality. The name Fatima has always stood for the best in cigarette quality. Give Fatima for flavor. Fatima has a much different, much better flavor and aroma than any other long cigarette. Give Fatima. They're extra mild. Yes, Fatima is the long cigarette which contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos superbly blended to make Fatima extra mild. Yes, extra mild. So give Fatima for Christmas in the attractive golden yellow carton. It's the long cigarette that has doubled and redoubled its smokers. Yes, more and more smokers every day agree Fatima is the best of all long cigarettes. p.m. Tuesday, January 9th. Heavy rain. Laura Barclay's murderer was still a free man. Ben and I were sure that whoever left their fingerprints on the inside of that garbage chute was the same man who murdered the Barclay girl. He had no previous record. His first crime, as far as we knew, was a killing, and the odds were all in his favor. The fingerprints gave us nothing. All we had left to lead us to the killer were three library books and a stack of old theatrical photos. The solution of most crimes for the working detective is method and persistence. When you have clues, you work with them. When you don't, you work your way to a logical conclusion as best you can. We went to the Los Angeles Public Library, the main branch. The librarians in the music room handle thousands of readers every week. None of them remembered Laura Barclay. We drove over to the Blue Fox Cocktail Lounge. We interviewed the manager, and he knew nothing of her personal life. We talked to Harry Schumann, the organist who had taken Laura Barclay's place. What would you like to hear, fellas? Police officers. I'd like to talk to you, man. How about Laura, huh? Yeah, that's right. All right, if I keep on playing, the manager wants full 15-minute sets. Oh, yeah, go ahead. That's all right. What can I tell you? How long have you known Miss Barclay? Oh, four or five years. It's a terrible thing. You got to get to whoever did it. Yeah, we're going to try. Can you think of anybody that might have killed her? I know you ask that question of everybody. I don't know. Does anybody ever know for sure? Sometimes. Well, I don't know. When you think of a person, you never think who might murder her. Maybe you might know a few things about her that you could fill us in on. I'll try. She go in for jewelry much? Rings, things like that? Funny you should ask that. She was nuts for it. Good things. Rings? Had a couple of beauties. Diamonds they were, big stones. Cost 4000 
I know she used to put most of her money into those rings. She buy them on time? Yeah. I remember one night she was overjoyed. The night she paid them off. Cost a lot of dough. Can you describe those rings for us? Not too good. I can give you the name of the jeweler she bought them from. That'll do. Do you know anybody else that we might talk to? I don't know any of her friends. She was an only child. No living relatives that I know of. How about her landlady? Yeah. I guess that's it, Harry. Thank you. For what? I wish I could help more. If everybody had your attitude, we'd be out of a job. Before we left the Blue Fox, Harry Schumann gave us the address of Laura Barkley's jeweler. The next morning, we checked with the manager of the store, and he gave us a complete description of the two diamond rings which the dead girl had purchased. They were valued at $4,000. He gave us detailed drawings of the rings. We went back to the office, gave the information to burglary detail. An all-points bulletin was put out describing them. Pawn shops throughout the city and state were alerted to watch for the stolen rings. We had lunch with Chief Thad Brown at Costa's Cafe. Never mind, O'Mara. I'll get it. Oh, thank you, Chief. I'll get you, Tim. Stew was good. Mm-hmm. Grab some change for the cigarette machine. Thanks. Need any cigarettes, Joe? No, no thanks, then. Let's go. What do you think, Thad? The description of the rings and the M.O. should help. They haven't turned up. Good chance he's holding on to them. Could be his first job. Probably scared. Anybody check back over the neighborhood there? Yesterday afternoon and this morning. A lot of door-to-door salesmen through that district. All been checked out. It's a dead end. Now where? If only those prints are checked out. Well, they didn't. Got a kickback from Brereton in Sacramento on his M.O. No make. We'll have to get him with what we've got. Here's the car. Sure you picked up all the loose ends? Oh, we've been back over the course three times. Go over it again. Keep going over it until something breaks. For the next ten days, we retraced our steps from the room where the crime was committed throughout the neighborhood to the place where she worked, back to the same dead end. Ben and I checked and double-checked each other to make certain that neither of us had overlooked even the smallest detail of the investigation. We got no place. It was 8 a.m., January 19th. Homicide, Friday. This is Rubles and Burglary, Joe. Yeah, Dick. Got something for you. Job pulled last night. A couple of watches, strand of pearls. How do we figure in it? His M.O. Yeah? Guy got in through the garbage chute. Besides fingerprints and photographs, one other mark by which the unknown criminal is identified is by his method of operation, his M.O. Once a thief finds a successful means of operation, he seldom changes it. In our search for Laura Barkley's murderer, we had checked our files and found no criminals at large whose practice it was to gain entrance through a garbage chute. It was reasonably safe to assume that this was the same man. It was 2 p.m., January 23rd. I was on my way back from the record bureau. Just had a call, Joe. Elmer Radcliffe. Informant? Yeah. It says two days ago he heard about some guy who was making the rounds trying to peddle a couple of diamond rings. Same ones? He's not sure. Doesn't know what the guy looked like. Any idea where the guy is now? Hasn't been around since. Told Elmer to keep his eyes open. Oh, that's good. Come in here, you two. What do you got, Thad? This report just came down from burglary. Pawn shop down in North Main took in a watch and strand of pearls last night. Yeah? Same stuff that Rubles called you about. Yeah, I remember. Where's it tying? Same guy tried to peddle a couple of diamond rings. 10 a.m., January 25th. Thad Brown arranged to have all pawn shop detail calls concerning the suspect put through to us on extension 2521, homicide. Five days passed. No further word. Homicide, Friday. This is George Rose. I run the Harbor Pawn Shop, second in Maine. Yeah, what's the matter? Man in here, trying to turn those diamond rings. The ones on the stolen property list. I can't talk now. Stall him, we'll be right down. Ben, move it. Yeah. The next corner. There it is. Just up the block. Pull up. All right, let's go. Hell. Here we are. Say, fella, look out, Joe. He's got a gun. You all right, Joe? Yeah. Out the back way. Let's get him. 
There he goes up alley. Can you hit him? You didn't stop him. Watch it. Come on, Joe. He's turning on the spring. He ran into that cafeteria up the street. Come on, let's run. Where'd he go? You see him? Yeah, there he goes. He's headed for the kitchen. Come on. Stop that man! Stop him! Out the back door, into the alley. There he goes. Duck Ben. All right, Joe, stop. He's not stopping. Stay clear. He's down. All right, come on. All right, get his gun. Yeah. He got him in the leg, Joe. Hit his head when he fell. All right, snap him on. Huh. Look on the little finger of his right hand. Two diamond rings. Yeah. Doesn't make sense, does it? What's that? Four thousand dollars worth of diamonds, and he's lying on a pile of garbage. The story you have just heard was true. Only the names were changed to protect the innocent. On April 2nd, 1947, trial was held in Superior Court, Department 81, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. Now, here are authentic reports from all over the country that tell the story of Fatima's sensational increase in popularity. New Orleans Division. Fatima sales up 300%. Detroit Division. Fatima sales up 348%. Los Angeles Division. Fatima sales up. 545%. More and more smokers agree Fatima is the best of long cigarettes. So enjoy Fatima yourself and give extra mild Fatimas for Christmas in the attractive golden yellow carton. Everyone who smokes Fatima says that this great new long cigarette is the best of all long cigarettes. Laura Barclay's murderer was identified as Martin Eric Swanson. He was tried and convicted of murder in the first degree. His case was fought through the Supreme Court of California and in the United States Supreme Court. In both instances, his conviction was upheld. Last Friday morning, after a delay of five years, Martin Eric Swanson was executed in the lethal gas chamber at the state penitentiary. You have just heard Dragnet, a new series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice for Dragnet comes from the office of Acting Chief of Police, W.A. Wharton, Los Angeles Police Department. Dragnet honors the city of Youngstown, state of Ohio, and the men who make up the Youngstown Police Department, another of America's great law enforcement agencies. One of these men, Chief of Police Edward J. Allen, honored as Policeman of the Year, who dedicates his life so that yours might be more secure. Fatima Cigarettes, best of all long cigarettes, has brought you Dragnet from Los Angeles. This Christmas, give the gift that makes every pipe smoker happy. A Christmas humidor of Mellow Granger. Granger is made just for pipes by the tried and true Wellman method. Rough cut to smoke mild and cool, and humidor packed to stay ever fresh. Yes, make this Christmas a Merry Christmas for all the pipe smokers on your list. Give them each a Christmas humidor of Mellow Granger. Listen to Dragnet next week, and be sure to hear Morton Downey tonight on NBC. NBC.